Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 150 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here are Two Crazy Ketos. We do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so just to, to give you guys a little heads up i'm having a bit of an allergy attack so I'm if sorry. i sound funny or if my eyes look watery rachel didn't beat me maybe i beat him maybe you beat me but <laughs> maybe you beat me over the challenge this week yeah oh <laughs> we'll talk about that later but no i'm just having a little bit of an allergy attack we haven't changed the temperatures and stuff like that and uh yeah, so my eyes are a little burny today. I think it's your body just saying, like, go to bed. Because that's the only way to fix it, is yeah. it instantly has to just go to bed. It doesn't go away unless I go to bed overnight. I can sleep all day long. I'll wake up with it. It's only if I go to bed overnight. I think it's your body, like, pushing the panic button. So, it could be, because it only happens, like, it'll happen now. Then it won't happen for, like, eight more months. And then it'll happen, like, three times in a week. Right. And But this one is a little bit more mild. It's, like, four o'clock usually, like... Yeah, usually they start early in the morning and then like by noon, like my nose is running and my eyes are burning and by now it's like, yeah, I'm passed out. So considering it's four o'clock and like, I'm not that bad. This is really mild. So it's four o'clock on Sunday and I have just walked in the house. Yes. We added another service at church. So six services this weekend. Yeah. Wow. And we are in our racing series still and I was... A very fast ladybug this week, as you can see. So excited about it. So, um, and the kids seem to like it too. They like ladybugs. You know, it's it's not it's not scary. Right. They're like, oh well, I've been a bee, and a bee has a stinger. And some of the kids ask me, does the ladybug sting? I don't think so. Does it? <laughs> no. I don't think it has any kind of stinger. I don't think so. But all I could think of this week was that Sesame Street song. Which one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They all played games at the ladybug picnic. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And they all played games at the ladybug's picnic. Remember that? No. I watched a lot of Sesame Street growing up because we only had three channels and I don't ever remember that song. Does anybody remember this song? Because I ask a lot of people at church, but there was a bunch of 20-somethings, and I just don't think they're old enough. They grew up with Barney. Well, I mean, I think they listen to, you know, Sesame Street and stuff, but, like, I'm so old-school Sesame Street. Oscar didn't even own his own garbage can. What was your favorite Sesame Street character? I don't know. I kind of liked Oscar. I liked Cookie Monster. I also liked Grover. My sister liked Oscar. Super Grover. I feel like I wanted to, like, put a smile on Oscar's face. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you just wanted to make him feel better. Maybe maybe you'd be the change in his life. You got a big smile on your face this week because we got a bunch of mail from people. Oh, my gosh. So, yes. To match my little ladybug outfit, I got the coolest shirt. Look at this shirt. It says, Fueled by Jesus and Ketones. I could not wait to wear this to church this weekend. And it's from Miss Tara Simpson. I remember we saw that shirt. The lady from the owner of Carolina Baking Company when we were at KetoCon was wearing it, and you're like, I've got to find that shirt. Seriously, I was like, I would like to purchase your cookies and your shirt. And Tara, she's like, what? <laughs> if you would have seen her face when she opened up the box and saw that shirt, she's like, I don't care about anything else. Uh, this shirt is awesome. This like, is... I'm wearing this every day. Yes. It's like, <laughs> as soon as it's going in the wash, and then it's going back on my back. Like, I love this shirt. But she also sent us some other cool yeah, stuff. Yeah, we got a bunch of mail from you guys this week. You guys were so awesome. You guys are amazing. So this is from Miss Tara Simpson. We love yep. you so much. Our favorite camper, right? Yes. Like, she is, like... I want to go camping with her because she knows what we to do. We are so envious because we used to go camping all the time, but we just never have time to go camping. She has the raddest tent that is like a hammock, and then underneath her dog can can be in the tent with her. It's it's just the coolest thing ever. I grew up camping, and you know we lived in, in New York, and then we had some property in upstate New York, so I grew up camping, and I was an Eagle Scout. And so camping for me was always like you had to pitch a tent. You had to yeah. pitch a tent. 
And when I met Rachel, Rachel's like, well, we're going to go to one of those places where the tent is it. like on a platform. I'm like, that's not camping. camping. Camping is like setting up a tent, laying on the ground. But we did that once for you. And then we switched to regular camping. Well, you know, it was the first time camping with city kids. If you've ever camped with city kids, you know, they're, you not, have to make sure that they can make it through the night. Right. Yeah, I mean, Joe was like, I don't think this is camping. I can see Target's parking lot from here. Like, this doesn't seem like you know, wilderness, but I knew to start off with, we needed to be able to like go home easily if it didn't work, but they loved it. Yeah. So now we're looking and trying to find like a pop-up camper, although it's not camping to me. I think it would be a little bit easier just for you and I to be able to get up and go. So we're I, looking for one of those. I'd like something with a turtlet, okay? <laughs> just like a toilet, please. So, Let's go over the box. So yeah, so oh my gosh, look at this. This one is for Tabitha. How cute is it? A Kong. She's going to be so excited. I'm not even going to show it to her yet. Now she's in her crate. Otherwise, she'd be up on the bed. She would be totally or up Or on here. the couch. We got these adorable ornaments. His and hers. Snowmen. And snow women. We're getting some of the coolest ornaments. This is gorgeous. We're seriously, this is not for you. Boaz is like, what is that? Look at this gorgeous ornament. What's in there? Look at this. That is Beautifully awesome. That is painted. so pretty. Get the dog away from that thing. <laughs> Boaz is so excited. Just has to investigate. You just have to investigate, right? Let's see. Then there is, look at this one. I love Jesus and coffee, which I do. That is I so love awesome. both of those that things. That's so pretty. I love Jesus and coffee. And hey, I'm running out of room over here. I know. We will we will probably push pause so I can put things back in the box nicely. But this is, this is like showstopper. It's my bicycle. I don't know if it's going to come through. It's my bicycle with two crazy ketos 2019. That thing is so awesome. How adorable is this? Just adorable. I love it. Oh my gracious, Miss Tara. And then there's a special gift for Joe. Zip Fizz. Zip Fizz. Rachel's favorite flavor. Not great. I, I do drink orange, but, but grape. Grape is all Grape Joe. is awesome. And then, last but not least, something for charity that if Roscoe sees it, yeah. he is going to steal. Roscoe, oh, it's over there, is a catnip. It's a like, little sachet of catnip. Roscoe is a catnip fiend, and when you give it to him, he rolls on the floor and, like, zones out. Like, he is high. He gets coked out. Yeah, and then he, like, runs around the house. He's, like, crazy. Speaking of Zip Fizz, though. Pass these back to me if you'd like. I know the other day, like, Autumn over on Watch Autumn Keto did a thing on like the peach mango yes and how the peach mangoes got melted extra in it which we had like a bunch of it we didn't even realize so informative and uh it skyrocketed her blood sugar and i liked that flavor but it was like okay not for me i took both of my boxes back to uh walt to sit to costco today so if you bought it at costco and still have it just take it back to them and say hey it has an ingredient that i didn't know was in there and they will give you your money back yeah, don't just hold on to it and be like, well, I'm just going to grind through this. It would be better for you to return it. Yeah, especially considering all the other flavors are on sale on Costco.com. Yeah. And you can get them at a discount in any flavor you want. Fruit punch. Even fruit punch. I ordered you a case of fruit punch. This is a nice guy. So first of all, Tara Simpson, you are amazing. Like all of this stuff was like just the coolest stuff ever. I couldn't believe it. Yes. Um, I also, we also got a couple more things I wanted to give shout outs. Hey, wait, before you do that, let me go put the bird outside because he's decided he's going to start talking. Yes. Okay. I'm back. Is he happy now? Yeah. Cause Anthony's sitting outside with his friend and so they're just out there now playing with the bird. Oh, okay. Awesome. So this one comes from Miss Debbie in our Facebook family group. Look at this hilarious thing. I cracked up on this. Which one is that one? It says... Oh, yeah. It says, no coffee, no worky. <laughs> and it's got a coffee pot. That is adorable. I love it, that. It totally cracked me up. I'm telling you, I know I keep saying this. We are going to have, like, the greatest Christmas tree The coolest tree Christmas tree ever. You guys are awesome. This one here 
comes from Barbara. She says she's a keto YouTube subscriber. Merry Christmas. Oh my gosh. Bacon! Oh, that is awesome. Is that gorgeous? And I don't think I remember seeing that one. Is, you didn't show me that one. It is all glittered up. Wow. Glitter and bacon are like my love languages. We are definitely going to be keeping the dog and the cats out of that room. Yeah, well. I wish there was a door that went into that room. We will be installing a little gate. That doesn't stop the cats. This is true. But we're going to try that poof of air yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. We have to order the canned stuff. This was adorable. So this is from, look at this beautiful card too. It's like handmade card. Woo. Oh my gracious. You're losing something. I am. This is from Donna Hatch, um, your YouTube friend, and she said she wanted to contribute to this year's Christmas tree. She always makes ornaments for her grandkids each year, and these are some of the ones that she designed for last year's Christmas. They're made out of icebreakers gum containers. What? How cool is that? So she says her husband chews a lot of gum. Boy, he's my kind of guy, right? Like, I love my gum. And she made six different styles, a snowman, an elf, a reindeer, a penguin, and then Santa and Mrs. Claus. And so we got Santa and Mrs. Claus. No way. Those are made out of, like, this gum are, containers? These are made out of icebreakers gum containers. You need to be making those and selling them on Seriously, Amazon. Seriously. Like, they are so beautifully detailed. And then she's got a little Santa list here on uh, that says, Santa, please bring keto bars, keto chow, grapow, and <laughs> snack cakes. Or smart cakes. Wow, those are awesome. That is amazing. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. That is awesome. This is so beautiful. I can't wait to Sit share down. the Christmas tree with all of you guys. Okay, so, yes. Are you... Are you? She needs to take the, keep that dog on your side because I am drinking a uh, pumpkin spice, the maple pumpkin super coffee. Only the problem is I chug those things so quickly... I poured it in a glass with ice and then added like another four more ounces of coffee to make it go longer. And every time I put my mug down, this dog keeps trying to drink my coffee. So I don't know if you're new to our channel, you may not know Boaz. This is my mom's dog. We are dog sitting this week. Um, while she is on vacation with my brother and his family. And, and evidently she lets the dog drink coffee. Yes. So anytime this dog smells coffee, He's all up well, in it. Well, you know what? If it was black coffee or just coffee with some heavy cream. You wouldn't mind. Fine. Have at it. But this is super coffee. And I don't even let you have a sip of my super coffee. I know. He's very You can have any other thing I own. More than anything other thing I own. But not super coffee. But not my super coffee. It's like me and the fruit punch zip fizz. Yeah. I never get a super. If I want fruit punch, I have to go take a tube and go hide it in my car. And usually she'll find that one too. And I'm. You have and, a nose for it. I am the same way with the kids. Yeah. Like the kids will be like mowing the lawns and stuff like that. And they're like, and I just know like, let's give them a zip fizz. Cause like, they're going to be it's like, hot out, I mean, lights. they're just pouring and they're, they're doing like three or four lawns at a time. Right. And um, they'll go reach for a fruit punch, and I'm like, eh, 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 any flavor but that. Any flavor but that one. That's how I feel about the Limon. Like, the Limon off limits. Okay. I just ordered you a box of Limon. Oh, okay. And a box of fruit punch that is just for you. Go hide it in your closet so the kids don't touch it. Because Limon is Anthony's favorite, too. I know. <laughs> the Limon is number two for me. So let us know in the comments down below. What's if, your favorite flavor, Zip Fizz? If you drink Zip Fizz, and we are not affiliated with Zip Fizz, I don't think anybody is. No. But, um, yeah, we just like it. There's two flavors. Like, I, I really like the Limon. I, the orange one that comes in the multi-pack is good, but the orange cream one is really good. Is that your jam? It's like the white, the white tube. Yeah. That one is really good. And then I like the grape. I like the fruit punch. But the Limon is awesome. I like the pink lemonade is really good too. The two that I've never tried, and I heard the one isn't that great, is the iced tea one. They have like an iced tea one. Okay. But they don't sell it at Costco.com. Right. And then there's also like, I think a lemonade one, like a yellow tube. Okay, I've never had that. And I've that. never tried that one. I've had blue raspberry, but it That's tastes okay. Like, it it's, tastes kind of medicine-y to me. It's like, well, it's blueberry raspberry. It's not blue raspberry. So oh. it's like very misleading of what it is. Because pre-keto, I was all about the blue 
new raspberry snow cones. Yeah. So I guess that's what I'm probably thinking. And the black cherry one is okay. That's it's okay. not like it's like not not palatable, but yeah. it's not, it's not like great. at the top of the list. It's not great. Yeah. So, but yeah, when I found out that Costco.com sells like the lemon and all the individual flavors, that's how we buy it now. Okay, I have to share this this little kid thing that like in the last service in our 1245 service it was so hilarious. So we've got these two little boys and I was asking them um, what were they dressing up for for Halloween? Uh -huh. And so the one kid says, I'm Thor. I'm going to be Thor. Okay. And then I asked the next kid, what about you? And the little kid goes, well, I'm going to be five. Because he thought that the other kid said four. <laughs> I'm going to be Thor. Oh, well, I'm going to be five. I thought that was like the cutest thing ever. They were just adorable. So before we talk about our week, I need some help from you guys. So Miriam from Keto Chow. Okay. Which is Chris's wife. Yes. Okay. They love owners. her. She sent me an email that she would like me to enter into their holiday recipe challenge. That's exciting. And like, I'm up against some like tough competition. Like I have no business being in this. It's like Carrie Brown, like the people who, some of the other people who have won their contest people who do all the recipes that are on the Keto Chow website. And I'm like, yeah, why am I even bothering? Wow. And then she picked the flavors that I have to use. So it's like holiday recipe, no problem. Give me the pumpkin. I'm making a keto pumpkin pie, oh. which I'm working on one of those right now. But I'll make use Keto Chow, right? Pumpkin pie, easy holiday recipe, right? Yeah. Now, I get eggnog. Which is holiday, it right? Is. It's very holiday. What do you do with eggnog other than drink eggnog? Well, and come up with something interesting, like I was not just say, like an eggnog cookie. Yeah, you don't think you could just make an eggnog keto chow and get away with it? Right. So I've been trying to figure out. So what I want from you guys, I have two flavors I have to work with. Okay, right? and I have to come up with two recipes. One of them is eggnog. Okay. The other one is chocolate. Which, well, that seems... again, right, chocolate brownie, easy. But it's got to be something different and interesting, and it needs to kind of be, like, holiday. So, like, what could we do? Like, you can't just do, like, chocolate brownies or, like, a chocolate pudding cake because that's not very holiday, right? We need to do a holiday-specific one. So give me some ideas of what would be a good holiday dessert using chocolate as a base. Or eggnog. Or eggnog. Well, the eggnog one... I've really been working hard on this one. I'm like, what would be really different that would be a good dessert? And nobody else has this flavor. And yeah, Just no, yet. I think there's a couple other people that have the flavor. Like, she, they have different flavors. Hey, we didn't get, like, beef base because I think somebody had beef base or chicken soup base. Well. So, anyway. That'd be hard. So, I was thinking about, like, what could you do, like, that would be a good holiday dessert that you can change to an eggnog flavor to make it holiday. So I came up with a dessert that I thought about a dessert. Like what is a dessert that I really enjoyed before that you never get to eat on keto? I like that. Okay. And that would be cannolis. Oh my gosh. How would you? Now the cannoli filling itself. It's pretty keto. It's pretty it? keto. You make it with like ricotta cheese. And I usually use mascarpone cheese because that'll lower the carbs down a little bit and give it a nicer consistency. Okay. And we could make it an eggnog flavored cannoli filling. So now you've got a cannoli, which is a year round dessert. All right. And then eggnog flavor it to make it holiday, right? All right. Here's the problem. What are you going to do about the shells? Oh, Yeah. Can you get something that makes it that crispy? I have been working hard on this. Like, and it took like buying biscotti, something but... special to do it. I bought a waffle cone maker, which is kind of like a Bazzelli maker. Okay. And I created a waffle cone recipe. Wow. And then made cannoli shells out of it. Okay, I'm impressed. So, like, I made a waffle bowl to see if it would work. But this is keto. Okay. This dog is like so excited about it. So I need to know. Now I'm still experimenting a little bit. And it's obviously not going to be quite as crunchy as a regular traditional cannoli shell because it's almond flour. Yeah. But I want to know what your opinion. Now it's going to. This is. I basically made like an almond kind of cookie. But this is very similar to a waffle cone taste. So tell me what you think. All right. Gladly. We're afraid at all. Well, it is. It is very it is crispy. Crunchy. Oh, 
yeah. Now, what if we stuff that with cannoli cream? Oh my goodness, yes. What do you guys think? Does that kind of look like a cannoli shell? Oh my gracious, yes. It definitely tastes like a cannoli shell. Well, I have to work on the recipe a little bit because I'm using a Resveratol monk fruit. Mm -hmm. It does have a bit of a cooling thing. So we need to work on that. I'm thinking about experimenting with allulose. I ordered some allulose. I'm going to try some allulose. I taste a little, but not bad. You know me. I'm like super not sensitive super to bad. it. It's not overly cooling. It and is very crunchy. And when you stuff crunchy. it with that cannoli shell, with the cannoli filling. I'm in fried. I can't wait to share this one. Plus, you can make waffle ice cream bowl. That would be a great ice cream like, bowl. This is like a, a waffle, like a sugar cone kind of waffle ice cream bowl. That is crunchy. What do you think? I love that. Do you guys think that could win? Would that? Would you vote for that? Like a cannoli filled, like a, a eggnog filled cannoli? I think it's very different. I don't know. Hopefully it'll win. If you guys can think of something else you think he should... I'm sure know. Chris is going to make a comment on here. Like, no fair asking people what they think. That's right. Well, you got it any way possible, right? It's also hard to tell, though, if they can't taste it. So I was really shocked that Chris didn't leave a comment on our egg salad video this week. Because it was, like, so easy? Yeah. Because you're always busting him for that? Yeah, because I'm always making fun of him for putting up videos like, how to check your mail. <laughs> how to shake a shaker bottle. <laughs> All I know is they went to Vegas for like some kind of food show and I had to met, I texted him. I'm like, that is the coolest camera ever. He had some kind of camera we we're holding and he pressed the button and it like auto centered and then panned around in the 360 degree things. So he was like standing there and he pressed the button while holding it and then the camera slowly panned around oh, so that you could see the no. whole convention center. Chris, we're going to have this like, camera next week. I need that camera. Here it comes. Well, I found out what it is, and it's actually the last generation of what we have for our little action camera. But now I keep finding this gimbal thing that would kind of do the same thing, only you could put your iPhone on it. And we look forward to bringing you a 360 degree angle next week because <laughs> Amazon. No, but speaking of cool purchases, I got my monitor, which I love. Giganticus. And we did, it was a joke. Right? Yeah. I, let's, let's explain that. So... We got this monitor. We got some scary comments. We got some scary comments. We got this monitor because it will help to make editing videos and other stuff much more efficient. Because if you've ever worked in like Final Cut or Premiere Pro, you have this long timeline. Well, now I've got one big long timeline. And it really does help me do my work a lot faster. And anything that'll shave off time, you're like, get it. Yeah, because our the average video takes us like two and a half hours to edit. Unless it's just like a two, three minute one. But all those cooking ones or keto on the couch it takes like three hours because the video is an hour long. Right. When we're done. And before that, we start off with an hour and a half and I've got to cut and then you got to paste in the comments because and all that Rachel. other stuff. And yeah, so there's a tremendous amount of nonsense. And generated. then we have to preview it for an hour. <laughs> and go Are back you to the drawing of yourself. Well, it's true. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. I don't know. I'm pretty long winded. <laughs> well, mine is just like, oh, Rachel, you can't talk about that. <laughs> well, so anyway, so we got this monitor. So we came and we we don't believe in debt. So anytime we no. do make a purchase like that, it's like we have saved up the money or we figured out like, can we afford it? You if know, we like, can't purchase it with cash, we're, we're not, not purchasing buying it. it. So when we said in the video, like, hey, like we went over budget, like that was all kind of a joke. Cause when it came, we're like, hey, this would be kind of fun. Like, how would you save up for this? Well, you would save up by maybe budgeting money out of somewhere else. So yeah. let's, we've talked about doing another budget video. We've done one in the past. Well, I'm I'm always cognizant of that fact that it's like you know whether you are a a college kid right. on a very strict budget or if you have a family i mean fortunately now our, our kids are like contributing to some of their own meals because they're like going out and buying their own breakfast or you know they're out they're at work and so they're you know buying their own lunch or they want more than just keto food or they want more than just keto food and so they have to purchase that as you know adults outside of the family groceries and, um, but we do remember what it was like to be th feeding three children, yep. you know, and, and it gets expensive. Yeah. So we were always looking at like, how can you keep meals like per meals per serving low? That was always like, it, we've never lived like on a food budget. We've always 
budgeted money from other places. Yeah. But we've also always been like very, we're, I never say we're cheap. We're very frugal. We're, so we, we always look for the best deal. So we were, we've always been in anything we purchase. Our whole idea is that if this isn't on sale, we buy another brand. Yeah, we, we only buy what's on sale. If chicken's not on sale this week, then we're not eating chicken. We're eating hamburger. Then. You know, it's that's how we've always been. So we've yeah. never really put ourselves on a food budget, but we always kind of play the game of like, how cheaply can we feed the family just yeah. to see can you do it? Yeah. And pre keto, I mean, we came up with some things like we would go couponing and stuff and be like, hey, we fed the entire family for two dollars tonight maybe right? we don't talk about that outside of the house because that sounds terrible but like it was yeah you know, we're between couponing and everything else but there was pretty much no way for us to afford like going out to the movies as a family or going to disney world as a family unless you found ways to cut expenses right so anyway we we thought it would be fun because the last time we did like a uh, like a keto on the budget or like keto for five dollars a day i had blonde hair almost you did have blonde hair it was a long time ago yeah but when we did it we kind of based it on like like what your current calories were which were like 1200 calories yeah so we thought it would be fun to challenge ourselves like can you do it on 2200 yeah calories? like can you ha make cheap food but also hit your macros right because that's a, a another level of challenge right which, so that was the whole idea about it. It wasn't about like trying to cheap out on Rachel or anything like no. that. Rachel is actually really hard because she's cheap with herself. I mm. usually get in trouble for being very extravagant with her because my attitude is always like, if I'm getting the new iPhone, so are you. Yeah. And like, she'd be like, no, 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 I don't need it. So I always have to kind of sneak stuff like getting her a pedicure and a manicure. She doesn't want that because she was like, no, 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 I don't want money spent on me. Like, I'd rather, you know, go to the thrift store or something like that. And I'm like, no, no, you deserve nice things. So usually I have to go out, get the gift certificate because then she has to take it. So we didn't want anybody to think that, like, he's preventing me from eating or, yeah. you know, like, you only get to have 85 cent eggs for life and that's all you yeah, can have. Yeah, no, it was just a fun challenge. And it I was, was proud of us. I mean, I know, you know. We, we did at the end of the week, you know, even if you took out the zip fizz. Yeah. You know, because that was just kind of like extra stuff. We knew where we could end up. You still, with with the zip fizz, you ate for $5 a day. Well, I still cannot get over the side effect of this challenge, which it, it's it's sensible when you think about it. But like, it's, it was still surprising to me was how high up our ketone levels were, right. how great our blood sugar level is, because we were just keeping it simple. Right. It's exactly what you try to like tell people when they're onboarding onto the keto diet, get rid of all the superfluous stuff, you yep. don't need, you don't need any desserts, you don't need any like snacks, just get on like just whole food and you're going to have good success. And guess what? Yeah, we did mostly whole food because we didn't want to spend a bunch of money. And, and you could you could have success. added other foods. I, a few people in the comments said like, "Oh, I would have gotten sick." Just like you need more than just ground beef and eggs. You could have done hot dogs and other things. But here's the thing, and the, that's why we did this. That is seventy five percent of our diet. Yeah. We just enjoy ground beef and eggs. We really do. We really do just like eating that. We seriously go to the store and buy ten to twelve dozen eggs at a time whenever they're on sale. And you know, because they're good in the refrigerator for like forty five days. And it's and versatile. We eat a dozen a day. Well and I mean but I think that that is that's a mom thing too. Whether you're a keto or not, I mean, y'all can tell. Yeah. I mean, you give a mom a pound of hamburger and just see what she can do with it. Like, yeah. Right. I mean, it's crazy what you can do with hamburger. Yep. Right. I mean, just amazing. So like, and it's that's just very what versatile. I like about it. I mean, you can make burgers, meatloaves. We make our like our little the Pizza. chicken balls. You can make meatses. You know, I have just grown to enjoy just having ground meat cooked up add some spices maybe put a little bit of like alterna sweets ketchup in there that's good some of their barbecue sauce a little bit of cream cheese ups the fat you know i have really enjoyed cream cheese in my ground beef yeah that, you don't need a lot you need like an ounce you don't want too much otherwise it ups yeah, the, the, carbs, the carbs but the flavor i mean it becomes the cheesiest like it just permeates the hamburger and so if you're somebody that like hey i like cheddar cheese on top of my hamburger try 
a little bit of cream cheese instead. Yeah. And you're only getting, like you're saying, an ounce. And I mean, it. it's nice. And it thickens up really well for reheating. Yeah. Now somebody, and we'll move on to the comments and stuff, but somebody did mention that like, hey, next time you guys do a challenge, please let us know ahead of time. Yeah. So we definitely will. This was kind of literally like a spur of the moment thing. Like I woke up on Monday morning and said to Rachel, hey, the monitor's coming today. Let's... Let's Wouldn't it just, be funny? Believe me, she usually gets mad at me. If I kind of like just throw something on her and be like, hey, this is what we're doing today. She's like, yeah, I need time to prepare for this one. Yeah, like, hey, this week we're going to just fast. <laughs> Starting right now. That would not go over well. Like a lead balloon. So, but yeah, so we definitely will. I think we asked for some suggestions and we're thinking about doing like a seafood challenge. Seafood, that's definitely something that we have not done. No. I think that it does present a challenge to get your macros just right well we're not going to just it won't be you can only eat seafood what we'll do is we'll do like it needs to be the start of the show though it'll be like seafood is your main protein but you can add butters and that oh, kind of yeah. stuff but like logan snee just did like 30 days without eating any red meat huh and it was really interesting he noticed like he was feeling better he was sleeping better he noticed his skin like a change in his skin and it wasn't because of the red meat what it was was because when you eat a lot of red meat and not a lot of seafood you've got your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is way off hey. but when you're eating mostly seafood it's reversed. your omega-3s come way up and that balances everything out which improves your skin so we don't eat a lot of seafood because i don't like seafood no so you know i like and shrimp can't... And it can be expensive. And it can be expensive. But I mostly, I don't like seafood. So that will be a challenge that Joe will not really super enjoy. That'll be kind of like a Rachel organ meat challenge. Wow. I'm glad we're going with seafood. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to figure out how to do it. But we'll let you guys know like the week before we do it so mm -hmm. that you guys can join if you want. And it'll just be like, you can still eat other stuff. But seafood will be the main source. It'll probably be like a no red meat, like... All of your protein and stuff has to be like seafood kind of stuff. And I promise it will be actual seafood. It won't just be like me chewing up food and being like, eh, seafood. <laughs> you want to do comments? Yes, please. So we don't get too ridiculously long. I'm so excited about the subscriber of the week because... We've got two of them. You don't... I'm the one who picks them. Well, I actually requested you one. You requested one out of our Facebook family group. Because I'm so excited. Okay. So the first one... Is the one that Rachel requested. And that's because you grew up with her and I you're super did. proud of her. Class of 1994. So it was actually High you grew school. up with her and, and Miss Beth from our Facebook family group. Yes. So all three of them are now in keto together. I am so excited. Like you, we usually try to find, we live in different areas. We try to find at least once a year. Sometimes it happens where we get twice because it's like they're down for Thanksgiving and right. down for Christmas. And we try to get together and go out to eat. And pre keto, it was always. Like Cheesecake Factory. You guys are going to have to find a new place to go out to eat. What are the three of you going to do? Because like the last time you went out to Cheesecake Factory together, you were the only one keto. Yes. So now, I don't know. Maybe we'll go get barbecue or something. Or we'll just, you know, put it to the challenge. Can we go back to Cheesecake Factory but like stay keto? Yeah. Because the nice thing about Cheesecake Factory, P.S., if you're ever like trying to like meet with somebody is they don't care how long you stay there. Yeah, that You can is be true. there for four hours and they're just like, all right, like, should we send your mail here? Okay, so the subscriber of the, the week, if Miss Beth hasn't figured out already, it's Debbie. Debbie! And so I'm going to put Debbie's pictures up here. And she wrote, my first ketoversary. I'm down 30 pounds. You're so awesome. This is the smallest I've ever been since hitting puberty. Amazing. I'm incredibly proud of myself and I'm looking forward to lose nine more. Those last 10 are coming off ever so slowly. Oh my gosh. Debbie, I am so proud of you. You look absolutely gorgeous. Yes, you look amazing. I know we are in like heading towards the mid 40s, but I think we're looking pretty good. You guys all look, all three of you look incredible. Yay. Okay, so we do have another subscriber of good. the week. Um, so this one is Margaret. Hey, Margaret. I'm going to put Margaret's pictures up here. So Margaret wrote, Lots of newbies joining. Welcome. I joined a few months back. I stalked for a while, but I recently got back to my pre-cancer weight and I wanted to share my journey with this family. Fantastic. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2017. I underwent surgery, chemo, and radiation for eight months last year. I gained 24 pounds. 
I call it the year of the slug. After I got my mojo back, I knew I had to do something. I've done every diet but but keto. So I thought, why not? That's kind of how I felt when I found keto. I've done everything else. What, why what's not? the harm in this one? Um, I started playing around with the recipes in April of this year. What's not to love there? Saw the weight coming off and the clothes starting to fit again. Energy is back. Not hungry all the time. No cravings for sweets. Uh, it's Nirvana. I so enjoy our two crazy kids, as I call them. Aww. I love their story, and I love uh, and their love for my and our Savior, who got this 63-year-old through a year from hell. God is great. Keto is awesome. Next goal, Wonderland. Oh my gosh! Well. Okay, so now I'm gonna start bawling, but this is that's awesome. Margaret, you look incredible. Can I see her? Oh my goodness, Miss Margaret! Wow, absolutely gorgeous. Wow, I don't think I've been called a kid in wow. a very long time. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, what an awesome achievement! You look beautiful. I'm so happy that you're like in back in health and remission and. Wow, we are just rejoicing with you. I know we're sobbing, but like we're we're rejoicing. This yes. is awesome. Thank you guys. I mean, wow. reading your stories in in our Facebook family group really brings a lot of joy. I know sometimes I know myself personally don't get a lot of time to answer because there's so much running around. But there's only two more weeks in football season. Yay. So then I get a little bit more time. But I read through there and it's just it brings such joy to my heart. And if, if you're new to our channel and you haven't looked at it, there's a link down below. Go join our Facebook family group. There are incredible, awesome people in there that are there to encourage you. You know, like people like Margaret like and Tara Margaret. and Vivijay. I mean, just that are always Heather. in there. <laughs> Heather. Oh, I mean, I can't even list them all. So am I missing you? I'm Jason. sorry, Jason. <laughs> I mean, so many people that are Katie that are there encouraging you. And I love reading the stories. Even if I don't get a chance to respond, I really do scroll through that thing constantly. We love you guys. And we really enjoy like sharing these wins. Yeah. Like this is it's life changing. Okay. So comments, Christina wrote, Hey Christina, I would love to see unfiltered Rachel. Oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a lot of comments so we're going to try to get through them. Sorry. Katie wrote, hey, Katie. Joe, you are one lucky craft keto to have such a fun, sassy, cheerful mermaid wife. How fun. Oh, bless your heart. I love I Katie. Oh, my gracious. And her chickens. <laughs> Still want my chickens. Overprocess wrote, hey, so glad I've discovered 2KK. You both are so entertaining to watch, and I love Rachel's expressions. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Joe's friend wrote, hey, Joe's friend. <laughs> So sorry about your window, Joe. Hopefully the insurance will take care of it. The insurance did take care of it. It cost me $50. What a blessing. Uh, so he said, I'm with you on the notification icon. I have to keep everything cleared or it drives me crazy. It helps me to have one important email account and one that I use to sign up for stores and restaurant newsletters and such. But then I don't post my email address on the internet like you guys do. Rachel, you are rocking the mermaid luck. Thank you so much. Actually, somebody said, one of the kids asked me today, like, did you get your hair cut? And I was like, yes. Like, <laughs> obviously, very short. Let's just take a look. How many do I have? 710. <laughs> 710. Something is wrong with you. I love it. Okay, so Nancy wrote. Hey, Nancy. Cutest mermaid runner around. Love your channel. Linda wrote, Hey, Linda. You look really good in that blue wig. Thank you. I'm thinking of making it permanent. <laughs> you would actually pull it off. I think you would pull it off. Yeah, right. Um, Lisa wrote, Hey, Lisa. That costume is definitely thinking outside of the box. A sprinting mermaid. You know, I am. I was talking to somebody today about Halloween costumes. They are not cheap. No, they are not. I was looking and, and I got into like just the kids section and $60. $60. For some of these things. That's why I don't dress up. Because and Rachel's always been like, oh, let's do a couple's custom. Like, I am not spending $100 on a costume for, like, a couple of hours. So I opened up one of the bags to just pull out and see, like, what does $60 look like? I'm telling you, it was made out Piece of, like, of tape and spit. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. And so I'm like, this thing is, if it lasts to trick-or-treating, I would be amazed. So I'm like, yeah, I'm always, like... All right, kids, what are you going to be? Uh, Godfather? You're going to be a hobo? Who's going to be a clown? Like, it's always it's always been like that, right? Yep. So Yvette wrote, Hey, Yvette. I just learned you can speed up the video and love it because I can listen to more now. You sound the same, just fast. Oh, good. Okay. I just sent my mom the book, Lies Your Doctor Told You. She thinks I need to eat healthy grains and fruit. Yeah. Well, I think that's 
that's a nice way to kind of answer some of the questions. That's what we said last week. Just like have him read that book because he addresses that right in there. Like eating healthy grains and fruit. And yeah. Stuff. And then you don't get into the whole like fight of like, you don't know, you're not a doctor. You don't know, you're not a doctor. Yeah, okay, well, a doctor. he's a doctor. Right. Cheryl wrote. Hey, Cheryl. OMG, I agree with you, Joe, about Sherry's kitty. My heart just melts every time she posts a photo. I know. We already have two cats, and seeing this precious little ball of fluff makes me want another one, especially since our cats are older. Thankfully, my husband keeps me in check. There was. A- That's our problem. Neither one of us keep each other in check. We're we t- kind of encourage each other. I know. Because cute. <laughs> like, why do you think we have a hundred pound dog? Because one day we were like, let's get a dog. We need a dog. And nobody told the other one that's a terrible idea. <laughs> but it's been a great idea. It's been a great idea. We just didn't expect her to be a hundred pounds. She's a giant. So Tara wrote. Hey, Tara. Baha. All of her pictures will not be stopping anytime soon. Good. Because I love that little purring. He does like the little biscuits. I love it. All I know is every time I pick up your phone, I keep seeing like ads for cats on your phone. Stop looking for cats. If you get cats, I'm getting chickens. No. So Bambi wrote. Hey, Bambi. Oh, I want a cockatoo. My husband's family had one named Sammy that was a tea lover. They told me he would say, Sammy, want a cup of tea? Uh, And then he would say, Sammy, want a bloody cup of tea? If they didn't respond fast enough. Oh, my gosh. He also wasn't a fan of one of his aunts and would walk through her eggs and wipe his feet in her hair. What a butt. Oh my gracious. They have a personality. Yeah, we actually had a parakeet. I forgot exactly what the what the breed was. That it couldn't stand it Rachel. It hated me. It was a female. And so we didn't know this about birds is that when you get them, a lot of times they bond to their owner. And this one bonded to me as like its mate. And so... Rachel was a threat to her. So every time Rachel would walk past the cage, it would turn its butt towards Rachel and shoot its poop at her. It really could not stand her. We had a poop shooting (laughs) bird. So when the pet store owner who had paid you in, in, In in, in, in Parrot called and said, hey, I didn't realize when you took that parrot home that that was like the last girl of this species anywhere around. Yeah, because he had a female for breed because he would breed them and his passed away. And he's like, now I need a female for breeding. So he was like, will you trade your parrot for me? And I'm like, I normally wouldn't do this, but this parrot really hates Rachel. It is shooting poop darts every time Rachel And that's how I got an African gray. Now I got to find somebody that will trade like contract work for a cockatoo. He's going to be like, I'm going to go do some flooring. And then he's going to come home with a cockatoo. Guaranteed. <laughs> Sue wrote. Hey, Sue. We have a single parrot and a tortoise. I hear you on living a long time. Our tortoise is 10 and can live to be 100. Oh, yeah. We are willing it to our daughter, but not sure how she'll be able to move it as it's already like 40 pounds. 40 pounds? And it's only 10. Oh my gracious. But how cool though. That is really cool. That's amazing. Where do you keep it? Would you have, you because I always think of a, a turtle in a little aquarium. It's a tortoise though. So it's outside? Yeah, usually. So Tia wrote. Hey Tia. I enjoy listening to y'all while I work. I've been binge listening. Rachel, I have a ball story for you. Yes. I have been making peanut butter balls for my husband at Christmas time. Balls. He's the only one that likes them in the home. So all three of our kids would say, mom is rolling dad's balls and dipping them in chocolate. <laughs> oh my gosh. That her is kids, awesome. kids like, sound just like our kids. That's why we get in trouble for saying moist because they can turn anything into a dirty joke. Okay. So your primal noms video, like I can't believe how many times you said moist when you were describing it. It was a lot. Like, <laughs> sorry, kids. James wrote. Hey, James. Please put up the recipes without pictures and update them as you get them. I love your sense of taste. I hate meals that take forever to prepare and cook. Me too. And then the taste is meh. Your meals are simple, few ingredients, and quick to make. Plus, they taste great. Aww. This is why I love your full day of eating videos. Simple, everyday meals. More, please. Well, thank you, James. thank you, James. What a nice thing to say. So, like, when we do recipes, I mean, I'm not the greatest chef in the world as far as creating recipes. I just take things that, like, we liked before or simple things and try to make them keto. And, again, because Rachel isn't, like, a huge cook, 
I try to come up with things that she could make easily, like doing something like chicken tandoori, like Keto Connect kind of recipes. I love doing that kind of stuff. But he needs to do I'm them. not very good at coming up with the recipe. That's why I go to their website so much. Yeah. But um, they can be complicated. And I'm more about like, let's come up with easy things that the average person can cook because we lived such busy lives as our kids were growing up. We never had an hour to prepare a recipe. It's like, what can you come up with in 10 minutes? Definitely why we, like, were so attracted to even, like, the electric um, pressure cooker. Yeah. Because how many times did we come home from work and be like, oh, my gosh, did you thaw anything out? Did you thaw anything out? Right. Like, no. And you're like, we've got 20 minutes before the children start eating each other. Yeah. Thus, we were going to McDonald's a lot. Yeah. So that really helped. Yeah. The, when the we got cooker. that pressure cooker and realized you could take something frozen, stick it in there, and it's still cooked in 30 minutes. That was like a money saver, like a health saver. Winner, like, winner. Winner. Teresa wrote, Hey, Teresa. One of my neighbors used to go to garage sales all year and collect children's books. He would have hundreds of them and then give them out to kids where they could pick one or two. For I Halloween. love that, that is idea. That's a cool idea. I love that. I have. You didn't like, even think about that. Like going I to the thrift store and sometimes have the books for like a dime. That is brilliant. And like, P.S., I collect children's books. Yeah. We need to do that for next year. That's a great idea. A uh, doll wrote, hey, doll. the hidden carb thing hit home for me. I had been adding zero carb lemon juice to my water and I decided to take a look at how many carbs are in a cup. Okay. 14 grams. Wow. 1.7 dietary fiber and 3.7 sugars and 1.1 grams of protein. I think I found the culprit to my four month plateau. Oh my gracious. And that is the problem. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, you're you're just adding it a tablespoon or whatever at a time. You don't realize it. And then if you're just doing a tablespoon, you're good. But if you're drinking multiple blender bottles full of water and each time you're putting multiple tablespoons, yeah, it right. adds up. Yeah. Man, I didn't think about that either. I, I was leaning pretty heavily on some lemon juice myself yeah. in my water. Kelly wrote, Hey, Kelly. Good to know about the hidden carbs. I work with seasonings all the time. So do we. Yeah. I mean, we really like our seasonings. We like things flavorful, but yeah. You got to be careful. I can go buck wild. So on the same video, Sophie wrote, Hey, Sophie. If someone wants to have more than a quarter of a teaspoon of something, how are you supposed to know how many carbs is in something if they don't have to include it on the label? Good question. And that's what the problem is, is because, first of all, they're allowed to round and they could be off by as much as 20%. That's a lot. And then because of the rounding, it can really affect things. It's like we've talked about with heavy cream. Heavy cream has just about a half a carb per tablespoon. So sometimes you'll see the container says zero carbs. Sometimes it says less than one. And sometimes it says one. It's just like the company, which way are they going to round it? Which is hilarious because it's all the same product. Yeah. Now all heavy cream has about a half a gram of carbs in a tablespoon. So we used to play that game all the time. Well, I'm going to buy the one that says zero carbs, thinking like I'm getting away with something. Well, I wasn't. No. I just, <laughs> I've learned the hard way. Unfortunately. That, like, no. So here's my suggestion, and it's the same thing with seasonings. You know, I always round up. So if the label on something like, I'm not talking about meat. I'm talking about like any kind of prepackaged thing. So like whether it be a smart cake, whether it be like your true limes. Okay. Um, any Anything like that, round up. If the label says zero, always assume it's got a half a gram of carbs. Right. Okay. So now if, let's say, for example, you're going to do garlic. If it says like zero on the label, and let's say you want to double it, figure you just ate a carb. But this way, if you're adding more than the actual serving size, you're never going to get yourself into trouble. That's good. So what I do is if it says if it says zero, I round up to a half a carb. So if I have a half a, if I have one serving, that's a half a gram of carbs. If I have two servings, which with spices is normally where you're gonna be, right? I've had a carb. If it says less than one, I round it all the way up to one. Okay, so one serving would be one carb. So one serving would be one carb. What's the worst that's going to happen? At the end of the day, you've had less carbs than what your macro calculator actually says. Yeah. That's the worst that's going to happen. But at least this way, you're not getting in trouble with hidden carbs that you didn't know were there. And it'll be tasty. It's a tasty way to use your carbs. Right. Okay, so Erica wrote. Hey, Erica. 
I love you guys so much. So glad God led me to your channel. Been on keto again for five months, 27 pounds down. Wow. My question is, what can I take to possibly help not get lots of loose skin? I'm not there yet, but I'm kind of worried. Working out three to four days a week, though. That's amazing. That, first of all, congratulations. Yes, you are doing a great job. The working out will definitely help. Absolutely. Now, I will say keto in itself seems to really help with loose skin because of the way you're losing it. Because Rachel had lost like over 100 pounds once before and had a lot of like loose skin. I'm not talking about like the wavy arms, with, but like just lots of loose skin around her abdomen and stuff. And then you would put some of that weight back on. And then on keto, you don't have that like crunched up kind of like cottage cheese looking loose skin like you do like most people get when they lose a tremendous amount of weight that sounds delicious p.s but you but don't have that no um, having lost so much weight i do think that keto has really helped me to gain a lot of elasticity i think that you know intermittent fasting has really intermittent helped. fasting is the biggest thing and dr barry talks about that a lot like because your skin does regenerate constantly. Yeah. So intermittent fasting, more specifically, going longer fast, like doing it 16, 18 hours. And when I say fasting, I'm not talking about you. To do it for the skin, you want autophagy. Right. Which means none of the, like, 50 calories is okay. It's 16, 18 hours, no calories. You need coffee, black, maybe a couple drops of stevia, but you don't want... You know, a calorie breaks a fast. Fat breaks a fast. Regardless of what anybody says, fat has calories in it. Now, and, but and if, for autophagy, you don't want calories. Right. And so we're, we're not trying to be like keto police or anything, but right. if you, but that's a very specific target right. that someone's trying to reach. And that's what reach. we're talking about. We're talking so about if you're looking for autophagy. It's not trying to be like being diligent on your diet or trying to like right. avoid having multiple meals during the day. And that's why you're intermittent fasting. If you're trying to fast for this, the, the skin, then yeah, you're gonna want the autophagy. And right. I would combine it with trying to wear like compression stuff so as that you go down, like, you know. It helps form it. No it shape does. It. Exactly. Slapstick food, bro. Hey, Slapstick. I love that name. I know, me too. My son's T ball started at three as well, and it was exactly as you described. This year he's six, and they kept score for the first time. And that means it starts to get a bit crazy with the parents. It has begun. It has begun. So Anthony and I got an email this week about that like little kid football mm -hmm. that they're having like an end of the year tournament. A and tournament. They need like officials. And they're like, we're going to pay, they're going to pay like $30. And they're like, only they're keeping score. And Anthony looks at me and goes, you want to do it? I'm like, oh, no, especially if they're keeping score. Crickets chirping, no one responding. S. Hughes wrote, hey, S. I skip Halloween altogether. Joe, you need to switch sports. You should officiate swimming either at high school or USA swimming level. You would pick up the rules really easily. Cool. We, we don't have all that crazy behavior. There's an occasional moment, but it's quite rare. The rules are clear. Time is time. The clock is the clock. And that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Rachel makes me laugh. And yay for the return of coffee. Enjoy yes. your week, y'all. <laughs> Susie in the tundra. Thank you. The problem is, is I absolutely love football. And I really love lacrosse. And lacrosse isn't nearly as bad as football with the coaches and stuff. It's just... It's just unfortunate, but it's something you deal with as an official. True. So Vida wrote, Hey, Vida. I can't stand having unread emails either. <laughs> MB wrote, Hey, MB. Rachel, you need to go into one of those Joanne Fabric emails and unsubscribe from them. Yes. Do the same for any other store that sends out massive amounts of emails to you. So true. Love you guys so much. I don't know why I don't have common sense. Because really, if you go on their website, you could be standing in the store Go to Hobby Lobby, go to Joanne Fabrics, go to Michael's, and just pull up their website. The 40% the off coupon is right there. I don't know why I have not done this. I'm going to give you one worse that I'm guilty of. So I have multiple email accounts. Like we have ones for like Two Crazy Ketos. We have one from when we used to do eBay stuff. Yep. We have my personal one. We have our church one. And then I have another one. And sometimes... Like stores will give you a coupon for when you subscribe to their email. They'll give you like a special 20% off coupon, right? So you've been shady and so got you the subscribe more than once? under several emails, right? You go in one time and then you type next time you go in with the other one. Well, of course, me, I forget to unsubscribe. So now I get like five emails from the same company, one in each one of them. That's the payment for being shady. <laughs> 
Miss Beth wrote. Hey, Miss Beth. I refuse to turn on the notifications for email. It would bother me too much to see that number going up. You can turn it off? Just turn that sucker off. I'm turning it off. By the way, accountants just love getting giant bags of receipts. Her husband's an accountant. LOS, P.S. Unfiltered Rachel is the best. She makes me laugh harder than anyone else I know. I love you, Bethy. Lisa wrote. Hey, Lisa. I can't stand to have those red circles on my phone either. I delete emails several times a week, if not every day. Same with my computer or my Facebook notifications. Okay, now that I know that that notification thing can be turned off, you, don't worry. Do you'll, not turn that off because you'll then never you'll, see never, it again. you'll also never read an email again. This is true. I got off the field yesterday, turned on my phone because whenever I put my phone, I go out when I put the airplane mode on, I opened it up. And I had like 153 messages like on email. So being on top of it doesn't help. Well, what if I didn't do it for a day? And then I opened you up my 700. job. Somebody messaged us or that like, hey, they had sent us an email and it ended up in the junk. And I opened up my junk folder and in four days there were 1,290 emails in the junk folder. Okay, so this was something unique that happened to me. I was te like texting somebody right like at church that was like interested in like getting a video or something. And she says, well, I think you just sent me a text, but I don't see it anywhere. My text to her got sent to a junk file. Yeah, that's possible. Is it? Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. Are there people calling me that I don't even know? Like they're like, no, you don't need to be friends with them. <laughs> So Mama Cox wrote, hey, Mama Cox. a lot of times I just delete messages without even going through them. I have three accounts. My main account that I use for important stuff. My second account I use for semi-important. And my third account is for junk stuff. I go through my important account every once in a while and I unsubscribe if it isn't important anymore. That is so smart. But I cross-contaminated my accounts. Yes. Like I went in and was like, okay, well, this is going to be my main account. And this is going to be the one that I give to like the mall store so you can get a Hollister coupon. And I accidentally... Did it a couple times. I've done that too, and that's why I've got multiple emails. Like, like my church account was literally only supposed to be for church stuff, but then I would like get something for church, and like you know, like I'm looking at something for media, and you subscribe to something because it gives you like the download thing, and now I'm getting a bunch of junk email because you know they all sell it. I don't care what they tell you, they all say we well, don't sell your email. Well, I subscribe to one thing for a media program. And now I'm getting like 50 emails a week from all of these companies that are similar in nature. Yeah. So. They're selling it. So James wrote. Hey, James. I like to follow the Paul Acker's lean approach to email and text and calls. Answer as soon as you get them. Don't look to see who it is and put it off. That wastes time and increases the chance of forgetting the answer. That's true. I run my business and personal life like this. Before this, I used to answer about 200 email calls and such every Monday morning. Wow. So then, yeah, you're like dreading Monday morning because you've like put it off. So just handle it. I am super I guilty of that. that. Especially because I check my email on the road. That's what I need to do is don't look at it until I get to a place where I have time to answer, which is usually at home because I hate doing it on my phone because like, you know, using the little keyboard and you want to type something nice. But that's what happens. Is I'll be on the road. I'll check my email, and you'll be like, that's really important, and then forget to go back to it later. Yes, and then, but you've opened it, and, and now it's no longer like, yeah. a so new you, net message. You forget that you saw that one and forget where it is, and then it gets buried deep, and then so every once in a while I'll go through, and I'm like, oh, I forgot to answer that person. It's a vicious cycle. It really is, and I'm really bad about like reading a text message and saying to myself, I'll text them later, and then forgetting to do that. I'm the worst. The only thing I'm worse at is returning phone calls. I'll say, I'll call you right back three days later. Oops. One time, like, because I'm really bad about that, too, and Miss Beth can say that she actually had, like, a key to 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 me. Like, if I said, if I said things like, hey, I'll call you right back, that was four days. <laughs> if I said, like, you know, hold on one second or something like that, then it was like, okay, that's two and a half days. Like, there was actually a ratio. I'm that terrible. Okay, so how many emails do you have on your phone right now? Over 700. Unread. Unread. Well, Heather has you beat. Hey, Heather. Heather wrote, I have 46,355 unread emails on my phone. 
fist bump, Heather. That's amazing. I got to see that. Heather, you need to send us a picture of that. Screenshot that and send it to us. That is, like, awesome. That is an accomplishment. That would drive me insane. That's a, That's amazing. Okay, last one. You know, the only thing is, like, more than 75% of those are Hobby Lobby and Michael's. <laughs> <laughs> last one. Sherry wrote... Hey, Sherry. First, I am on Team Joe with the red notifications. Mm. It drives me crazy to see those on my phone, so I go through them as soon as I see them. Second, you really need another cat. I wasn't planning on having any more, but I just they just kept finding me. My one-eyed kitten is number three. I also have two dogs. Also, I agree... If you were just starting out, you really should need to take pictures. We all tend to beat ourselves up, and it's great when you can visibly see how far you've come. I regret not taking any pictures before. Thank you once again for a great video. I loved Rachel's analogy of keto chow. It's exactly how I use it. You guys make my day. Thanks for uplifting atmosphere and pro that you provide us. Also, thank you so much for the lovely note that you sent with my 2KK blender bottle. You guys rock as always. God bless. Aw, Sherry, we love you so much. And we also love your one-eyed cat. It's it's a black cat, which is like, there's such a tender place in my heart for black cats because like I grew up with black cats and black and white cats. And yeah. I don't know. They're just like super lovey. <laughs> but her cat is like adorable. Well, I think Sherry summed up the entire last week's Keto on the Couch episode with that little post there. So that's a good place to end this week's Keto on the Couch. Yes. Yeah, so if you are new to our channel, uh, make sure you go down in the comment section and leave some questions and comments and we will answer them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Mm -hmm. And also make sure you go over and uh, hit the like button and comment on our 5,000 subscriber giveaway. Enter to win. Yeah, because if you joined us when we were live, the comments that you left when we're live don't show up in the comment section of the video. So you yeah. have to make sure you go comment on it after it actually posts. Yes. And speaking of live, we are going to try to do another one this week. I'm not quite sure what day, but we will give you more than 10 minutes notice. We this are going to get the hang of this. Yes. Yeah, we got a new adapter to hook it up to our computer so we can actually use our camera instead of our phone. That'll make the quality a little bit better. Hopefully. And we figured out how to get the microphones going in through to the computer as well. So that should help. This is amazing. Yeah. Technology, right? Yeah, so we're going to try to figure out a day this week. We'll leave a notification in our Facebook family group as well as in the community on YouTube. And we'll try to give you like a day's notice. Like, hey, we're going to go live tomorrow at this time. Yeah. So. So that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and leave some comments and questions down below. And make sure that you hit the like button as well in this video. Yeah, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.